Good evening, good evening, everyone. This is Apostle Corey Green. I greet you all in the precious name of Jesus. I pray that each and every one of you had a wonderful, wonderful day. Again, I greet you all, those who are watching, tuning in, listening for the first time, uh, whether it be by Facebook, Periscope, YouTube, or listening to a broadcast. I greet you all in the precious name of Jesus, and I know that something will be said on today that shall have a great impact on your life. So I'm going to open up in prayer and we're going to jump right on into the word of God. Our Father God, we come now and we give your name glory, we give your name honor, we give your name praise. We thank you, O oh God, for another opportunity to open up your word, O oh God, your word that gives life, O oh God. We thank you for uh, just the word that should go forth for today, on today. I know I should go forth with the power and it should accomplish that which you set it out to accomplish in the lives of these, your people, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, that this word shall take root in our lives. I ask you to speak to me. And through me, in the mighty name of Jesus, I blood block any uh, uh, distractions of the enemy, O oh God, any seeds the enemy will try to sow to try to snatch this word. I cancel it in advance in the mighty name of Jesus. Speak to me and through me, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. O oh God, let you be glorified. We give name, glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Good evening, good evening, Constance T. Yvette, God bless you, God bless you. Uh, so, uh, do a quick recap. Again, of last week's Bible study, we were on part two. Last week was part two of our uh, series that we on, Prayer Soldiers. And last week, uh, we continued uh, talking about the threat of prayer uh, and, and how, how, how much the enemy is intimidated by your prayer life, by when you have an effective prayer life, how, how, how the enemy does not want you to be in prayer, how the enemy does not want you to have uh, a prayer life. And so we, talk, we talked about uh, our main passage was from the book of Daniel. Uh, of course, when Daniel prayed, his prayer got held up for 21 days because of the demonic principality over Persia and how uh, the, the warfare that took place, how, how the angels were, were, were being sent. Gabriel was sent to bring the message, but Gabriel got held up by the demonic principality. And Michael, the archangel, the chief over all of the heavenly hosts, the warring angels, he came uh, to fight uh, uh, against the demonic principality so that Gabriel could break, th could break free and get to Daniel. And, and so we will talk about the importance of uh, uh, why, why that was? What if Daniel had stopped praying? What if Daniel had, had, had stopped trusting God, and that that delay would have been even longer? Uh, and so, and how I understand that God gave us territory to rule in, and 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 we have the ability to make laws in a realm of the spirit, uh, because again, because we're ambassadors uh, for Christ. We talk again, prayer being that weapon, and, and and that weapon of mass destruction, you have to use it, and use it often, and very often. And we and how we also talk about Elijah when when he prayed, Elisha when he prayed for his servant. Uh, eyes to be open at that, that the enemy sent an entire army to capture one man. The enemy sent an entire army to capture one man. But what, what was happening in, a, in the natural was an indicator of what was happening in the realm of the spirit. That Satan was so threatened by Elisha. He was so threatened by what Elisha was doing. Because remember, Elisha spoiled the plans of the enemy. Because Elisha was able to go uh, 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 to the king of Israel and let him know uh, uh, what, what, what the king of Syria was up to. The king of Syria was, was, you know, was planning an attack, but God revealed it to Elisha what was going on. Elisha revealed it to the king of Israel, and they were, they were prepared for the enemy's attack. And we were saying that through prayer, prayer will uh, open up your eyes to see some of, the, some of the planned attacks of the enemy. And so Elisha's servant couldn't see. He could only see in the realm of the, the natural realm, but he couldn't see in the spirit realm. So he thought he was outnumbered. What did Elisha do? He prayed. Elisha prayed for his eyes to be opened. His servant's eyes was open, and he saw chariots a uh, 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 fire, horses of fire, chariots of fire all around him. And he said, and, and, and Elijah was this pretty much what I was telling you. There's more for you than that's against you. So the enemy wants you to go by what you see to make you feel like you're outnumbered, to make you feel like you're defeated, to make you feel like there's no manifestation, to make you feel like there's no change. When in all actuality, you see in the realm of the spirit, you see how much has is going on. You see how much was blocked. How much God, got, how much was blocked your, how much your prayers blocked the enemy from doing certain things. How many things has has already took place in the spirit? If you could see in the spirit, you see that there's more for you than that against you. If you can see in the spirit, you see that there's more working in your favor than what seems to be working against you. But the enemy's tactic is to try to get you to go by your sight because he prays on our physical body, our flesh. That's why scripture says that we walk by faith. As children of God, we walk by this thing called faith, this living organism called faith. We walk by faith, not by this physical sight. And, it's under, and, 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 and faith is that deposit. It is that down payment for anything you want from heaven. But again, begins and it ends in prayer. It begins and it ends in prayer. It begins and ends in prayer. And cannot stress that enough. And so as a prayer soldier, 
prayer warrior, this is this is something that has to be your lifestyle. It has to be something that 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 it, it, it it's just just down into your fiber, into every part of your being that this is what you do. Prayer is what you do. And you understand that every time you pray, your prayer produces results. You must know that. You must know that. And I will keep stressing that in this series that you must know that every time you pray, it is producing something in the spirit. Every time. Not one time. Not every once in a while. Every time. Every time you pray in faith, your prayer always produces. There's not one time you prayed in faith that your prayer did not cause something to happen in the realm of the spirit. Again, there is not one time you've prayed, not one thing you prayed for, where your prayers did not cause a reaction in the realm of the spirit. Prayer causes things to move in the realm of the spirit. You have to keep remembering that that that, that foundational principle. All right, now let's go to our, our lesson today. We're still, uh, again, uh, on our series, Prayer Soldier. Today is part three, and we're going to talk about praying heaven on earth. Praying heaven on earth. So we understand the premise. God sent you on earth to bring heaven on earth. Repeat after me. God sent me on earth to bring heaven on earth. Say it again. God sent me on earth to bring heaven on earth. Say it one more time. I want it to sink down in. God sent me on earth to bring heaven on earth. You are heaven on earth. It ain't some cliche. I'm, I'm, I'm helping you to understand your DNA. I'm helping you to understand who you are. Scripture says our citizenship is in heaven. That means we originated then. I say it every week that you are the breath of God and God never wastes a breath. So, and again, you, I'm talking to you, are heaven on earth. Yvette, you're heaven on earth. Lisa, Janet, Michelle, Shamira, you're heaven on earth. You are heaven on earth. You are literally, literally heaven on earth. Now, follow me now. And so, with that being said, in understanding this, it will also help you to begin to realize and recognize and understand that if you are a part of heaven, could we establish that God sent you on earth to bring heaven on earth? We've established that you are heaven on earth. So that means that you can bring parts or other parts of heaven here on earth. You have the ability, you have to understand that you have the ability to bring other parts of heaven on earth. So again, as I, as I alluded to last week, as I, 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 as I kept reiterating last week, and you have to get this because, again, this is messing with your theology of how we've been trained and taught in some aspect. It's not God's job to manifest heaven on earth. But it's your job to manifest heaven on earth. This is why we rule. This is why we reign on earth. Again, Jesus Christ is in us. He rules and reigns through us. So it is your job, it is my job to rule and reign on earth, right? So it's not God's job to manifest heaven on earth. It's our job to manifest heaven on earth. And I've been, I've been saying this theme over and over again that God will do some things for you, but he's not going to do everything for you. There's some things he will do through you. Some believe that God's just going to do it all. He's going to do it all. He's going to do it all. He's already done it all. Some things he will do for you, but some things he will do through you. So you have to keep that in the back of your mind. There's some things he's waiting on you. Heaven is waiting on you. So perhaps you've been waiting for heaven to respond, but heaven is waiting for you to respond. By manifesting what's already done. By manifesting. You manifest what is already done. God's giving you creative ability. To manifest things on earth. Remember, you are his DNA. Scripture says that, that, that we were created in his image. In other words, we're spirit. Like he's spirit. We came out of him. We were created in the image of God. It was him, Jesus Christ. What once At that point in time, he was just the word. And Holy Spirit. We were created in their image. We're spirit beings. And it's our job... Down here, 
to rule. Satan got kicked out of heaven down here. So Satan thought this was his domain. He thought this was his realm. He thought he ruled it all here. And we showed up and we ruined the party. You are the life of the party down here. You, you, you spoiled Satan's party down here on earth. You spoiled that party. And that's why he's raging war against the children of God, the body of Christ. Because A, number one, he knows that he, we have something he can never have again. We can always access the glory of God. He once was able to access the glory of God all the time. That's why he got prideful because he began to think that he was God. He could outrank God and he could uh, overshadow God because he was a custodian of the glory of God. He was a cherub angel. A cherub angel was a guardian of the glory of God, it, it was, uh, uh, of, 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 of the glory of God. And so he began to get all, all of God's glory that was coming to him. It, it lit up all of heaven, uh, 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 etc. with, with all, all of the jasper and stone and onyx that was on Satan's body. Lucifer was his name at the time. And then it would make music in heaven. And of course, when Christ came and, and, and went down, uh, was crucified, uh, he went and, and stripped Satan of all, all of those onyx barrel Jews, etc. Uh, uh, so, so he can't make that type of music anymore, but he still can pose, pose as an angel of light. He still has power. He still has ability. But he's just not made up in the way that he once was. But we came down here and added on to that. Christ, Jesus, Jesus Christ already spoiled the party. Took the keys of hell and death from Satan. But then now, we came down here. And he's really, he's really messed because we were already here. As far as, you know, Adam and Eve got sent down. And then, you know, then God wiped with the flood after all that stuff. And then the whole nother generation rose up. But Satan thought, oh, yes. God wiped them out. They're done. They're finished. The only one left we have to take care of now, you know, let's just get uh, uh, Noah and, uh, and, and his people. And it backfired. It didn't work. It didn't work. And so what I'm trying to get you to understand is you're a problem to Satan. You, you are a problem. You have to understand you are a problem. Repeat that to me. I am a problem to Satan. Why are you a problem? Not just because you're here. You're a problem because what you're here to do. You're a problem when you're walking and you're calling your purpose. You're a problem when you pray. You are a problem when you pray. You are a problem to Satan when you pray, when you have a prayer life. You must understand this. And so I'm just building some foundation here. I'm going to take off. So again, you have creative ability. God's put creative ability in you to manifest things on earth. God's put creative ability in you to manifest things on earth through your prayer life. He's given you power. He's given you authority on earth to do what is impossible for the flesh to do. So the good news is that the real you is not flesh. You're not flesh. You're not this physical being. The real you is Christ. For Jesus Christ is in us. Christ, again, we know Christ is a title. I've taught this already. Christ is a title. It means anointed one. It means anointed one. You are the anointed one. Jesus Christ was the ultimate anointed one. And we the first. he was the firstborn of many other Christ that was going to follow Jesus Christ. Christ is simply a title. It means anointed one. It means anointed one. You are anointed. And you had to be anointed to be able to carry out the will of God on earth. Follow me now. So, so you've been anointed by God to fulfill his will in the earth. We know that premise. So Jesus Christ showed us how to do it. And Jesus Christ, we know, lives in us as children of God. We know that, that he lives in us as children of God. Hello. And so, and so, so to just, just put, put that in perspective. So we have somehow gotten caught up in this whole concept that God will do it all. I'm just waiting on God. He's going to do it. Just waiting on God. Just waiting on God. And we, we, but we can't sit around and wait on daddy to do everything because he's already done everything. He's done all that he's going to do. It's finished. And so in heaven, it's a completed and finished work. It's completed and finished work. You have to understand it. It's already completed. It's already completed. In heaven, it's a completed and finished work. It's on earth that the completed work, the finished work in heaven... Needs to manifest. So we need to manifest what's done in heaven and bring it on earth. Even Satan knows that the work was already done. Catch this now. Even Satan knows 
that the work is already done. That it's already completed through Jesus Christ. So for now, he hopes you don't know that. He hopes we don't know that. And if we know it, he hopes that we don't execute the plan accordingly, properly. So understand, hear me clearly, hear me clearly. Satan cannot stop manifestation of your prayers in heaven because it's already done in heaven. I'm going to say that again. Satan cannot stop the manifestation of your prayers in heaven because it's already done in heaven. So I want to get this deep. I want you to get deep in your mind. Satan cannot stop the manifestation of your prayers in heaven because it's already done in heaven. So you understand that? That, that should boost your confidence in prayer. That's a boost your confidence in prayer. But here's where it gets tricky. He couldn't stop you from getting on earth. I'm going I'm to take a step further. I'm going to take a step back for a second. Satan couldn't even stop you from getting on earth. Although he tried. Although he tried. Remember I told you that he, he, he don't try to attack when you were born. He tried to attack you when you were conceived. In your mother's womb he wanted to attack. He was trying to attack. He was trying to find a legal right to attack. He didn't even want you to get here. He didn't even want you to get here. And I'm assured, and I keep telling you how he attacked you, not when you were born, but he could attack, attack when you were conceived. And sometimes we can see it physically when, when he may attack a child with some physical deformity, illness, born with certain things, uh, 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 through, uh, through, through miscarriages, through uh, uh, abortion, etc. So those are ways in which he was able to attack the womb. But we have to remain diligent and praying against this enemy who's trying to prey on us. P-R-E-Y. And so he couldn't stop. But see, he, tr he didn't want you to be on earth. So please understand, when you were in your mother's womb, he had plans to stop you from coming here. He had plans but thanks be to God, you're here. Now, follow me now. So he couldn't stop you from getting on earth. So what does that tell me? That tells me that you are manifestation. You are manifestation and you manifest heaven on earth. Repeat after me. I manifest heaven on earth. I manifest it. I manifest it. You manifest it. I manifest heaven on earth. Repeat after me. I manifest heaven on earth. So everything we ever have needed or will need was produced in heaven. And it's our responsibility, it's your responsibility, it's my responsibility to get it here on earth. But we've been trying to put it all on God. We've been trying to put it all on God. Why would he give you power and authority if he was going to do it all? Why would he tell you to put on the form of God if he was going to do it all? Why would he say you declare a thing that shall be established if he was going to do it all? Why did he say I give you the power to create wealth if he was going to do it all? Why did he say the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous prevails, avails much if he was going to do it all? Why would he say ask and it shall be given? Seek. And you shall find, knock, and the door shall be opened. All of those are action words. Ask, seek, knock. If he was going to do it all. Why would he say, I want you to rule on earth, subdue. I want you to have dominion here. If he was going to do it all. So now we understand, now it's more personal responsibility. But it's not putting pressure on yourself. Because Jesus Christ is in you. So he'll do the work through you. But we just had to put him in position to be able to do it. So guess what? Understanding is your responsibility. Satan couldn't stop you from getting here. That makes you manifestation. You are manifestation. Because Satan did not want you to get here on earth. And he tried to do what he could to make sure it didn't happen. So you are manifestation. Not only that, you are the manifestation of someone's prayers. Someone prayed for you to be here. Someone prayed for you to be born. You are the manifestation of someone's prayers. Hello, somebody. You are the manifestation of someone's prayers. 
And even when you were born, someone prayed for you. We're praying for you. You prayed for others. You are the manifestation of someone's prayer. So I'm saying all this. I want you to understand how powerful and how necessary prayer is. We cannot take this thing as a, as a like thing. Again, I said all the time, every child of God prays. We're not saying that you don't pray. Every child of God prays in one way, shape, or form. Whether it's once a week, once a day, several times a day, every child of God prays. But I keep pushing you about, it's about praying on the level of our promotion, which we have been promoted. So understand, going back to the manifestation, Satan cannot stop the manifestation of your prayers in heaven. He can only delay or hinder it from manifesting on earth. So think about how much your prayers have already produced in a realm of the spirit. You got to catch this now. Think about how much your prayers have already produced in a realm of the spirit. Daniel prayer, we talked about last week, Daniel 10, his prayer produced an answer. Gabriel was on his way with the answers. So the answer was already produced. He said, Daniel, from the first day, from the first day you prayed, it was heard. And I came for your words. I came because of your words. I came to bring an answer to your prayer. But I got held up by this demonic principality over this region. So that tells me, okay, every time I pray, you got to get this now. Every time you pray, heaven responds. It's like making a transaction. It's like going to the teller ATM, you put in your card, you make a withdrawal. You go to the bank, you make a withdrawal. Every time you pray, you're making withdrawals from heaven. Every time, not sometimes, every time. Anytime you're praying a prayer of faith, there's not, it is impossible to pray and results not occur. Again, it is impossible to pray and it not produce results. Why? Because if, if, if that's the case, then God will be a liar. Your prayers, when they're connected to God, you, you're praying unto God, our Father, He can't fail. So because God can't fail, your prayers unto God cannot fail. But where the trick of the enemy comes in is when it comes to the physical manifestation on earth. You don't realize that you're ready to produce the spiritual manifestation in a realm of the spirit. We saw it, i.e. Daniel, last week. So, so I, I'm trying to boost your confidence in prayer. For some of you, the enemy is trying to make you think your prayers don't reach heaven. Your prayers aren't productive. Your prayers aren't producing because you, you're not seeing any results. Because the enemy's now got you caught up on what you see. First trap, first trick, and now, and now you're playing by his rules. Now you're on his turf when you're looking by what you see. What well, I don't, oh, this hasn't happened yet. Oh, I guess it ain't working. Oh, and then you get upset and, and you get disappointed. And then you get frustrated with God. And that's the plan of the enemy. That's Satan agenda. To make you think God didn't hear you. To make you think that if they didn't produce results. Because you don't see it in the natural. But if you could see that all that stuff that you prayed according to the will of God. That the moment you prayed it according to. Now there, there is God's divine timing. Where there's some things he said okay well it's not time for that yet. But if God's put it in your heart. He's put that desire in your heart. That burden is it's like a burden on you and you want it. And he put that desire in you. Then that's a good thing. That's let you know it's, it's near. But some of you may feel like, man, I've been sensing this thing for years. It's been heavy on me for years, but I don't see it. I don't see my marriage yet. I don't see the, the financial breakthrough yet. I don't see this yet, etc. But you have to understand that if, if God's putting you on, that, on you that heavy, then it's a clear indicator that the enemy is fighting you extra hard in that area. And like Daniel kept praying, he often prayed, always prayed, you got to pray. His got held up for 21 days. Yours might have been held up for three, four, five years, six years, seven years, eight years. So we have to change our approach to prayer. Understanding that there is not one time that I open my mouth that my prayer don't produce results. There's not one time that you open your mouth that your prayer don't produce results. Guaranteed. Spiritual transaction, you made a transaction through prayer, it's done in heaven. Because it's already completed work. So you, you, you're not trying to get something. You, you, you're not trying to get something new to happen. It's already happened. 
That's why I keep telling you, you're not living in the present. You're living in the past in the realm of the spirit because it's already done. So you're not, we're not trying to, I'm not trying to get God to do anything. He's already done it. Lord, please move here. Look, he's already done it. All you're doing is manifesting what your prayers have already produced in the realm of the spirit. You're, all you're doing is manifesting the completed work that's already, already done. And whatever area that is in your life, that's all we're doing. That's all we're doing. But you have to get to this mindset in a realm of the spirit and faith and understanding that there is not one time that I have opened my mouth to pray that my prayer didn't produce results. Not one time, not one, not one, not one. Now, now the enemy going to come in when he's going to say, all right, let's check the record here. You prayed about this. You don't see that yet, do you? You prayed about this. You don't see that yet, do you? You prayed about that. You don't see that yet, neither. It's a game to him because he wants you to go by your flesh, by what you physically see. To make you think you haven't already manifested it. To, and all he's doing is trying to buy more time to keep on blocking it. Trying to buy more time to keep on delaying it. Because he knows he could not delay it from being produced. But he can delay it from manifesting in the physical. He can delay it from manifesting in the spirit. Remember I tell you all the time. And, you gotta, and I'm going to keep saying it until you get it. Picture it. God up in heaven. You prayed it. it it's released from heaven. God said, okay, it's out of my hands. I've released it now. Once it leaves God's hands, it's in your hands. It's on you to manifest it now. It's on you to manifest it now. That's why you can't afford not to pray. That's why you cannot stop praying about that thing. The biggest trick the enemy ever tried to bring, one of the biggest tricks the enemy ever tried to squeeze into the church is to make you think, well, I don't need to pray. I only need to pray about it once. I done prayed it to the Lord and I left it there and I'm just, I'm just not going to pray about it no more because if he want me to have it, he'll let me have it. You're praying, praying, playing into the enemy's hand. So if God's already released it, it's out of his hand. He does want you to have it. He's already sent it, but it got held up. And you're waiting on God to do something that he's already done. He said, no, it's on you now to manifest it. Why else would I give you the power? Why would I give you the authority? You're waiting on God to do things, and he's waiting on you to do, do it yourself because he's already done it. But it's his power at work in you. So you can't lose. It's a win-win situation. But you see the game and the tactic the enemy has, the, the, the blindfold the enemy tried to pull over the church. To make you think that all these things haven't manifested yet. It's a war. And Satan, it, it, he, he, he's a technician at it. He's very tactical in his approach. What can I do to make them think that their prayers aren't, manif aren't producing. What can I do to get them weary to where they don't even want to pray about that thing no more? Because every time, hello, hello now, hello somebody. Every time you pray on that thing that God will release and Satan's holding up, it's now you have the advantage. It's, it's bringing fire. It's, it's, it's causing damage. He's losing his grip on it. He's and every time you stop praying about it, oh. He feel oh you getting upset about oh oh I got I got to get I got I got more grip on now 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 I can buy more time. Remember all Satan is trying to do is buy more time to keep delaying. He's trying to find more legal rights to keep delaying what God's been released. Some of you are five, ten, fifteen years overdue for for some stuff. Cause you talk about I'm not gonna pray about that no more. I'm not concerned about that no more. I'm just gonna leave it there. And if, when you understand how the laws of the spirit govern, some say that's not fair. Favor is, favor is not fair and the favor of God is on your life. But you got to work this thing. Favor doesn't seem fair. You, you, you being able to declare a thing and it's established doesn't seem fair. Death and life in the you being able to speak life. Manifesting things, that don't seem fair. But you have that power. You have that ability. You have that power. You have that ability. What is your purpose? Preach the word. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Because he gave you that power. God's given you that power and authority. So again, you are the manifestation of someone's prayers. And so again, Satan can only hinder it from manifesting on earth if he feels he has a legal right to do so. That's when we come in and make sure that manifestation happens. That can only be done through prayer and warfare. And yes, sometimes it is a fight. Sometimes it is a fight. It's not always an overnight thing. Sometimes there is some long-suffering fruit of the Spirit. 
Sometimes that is move, counter move. But the key is don't back down. Don't back down. Jesus didn't back down. They tried to trap him here. They tried to trap him there. They tried to kill him here. They tried to set him up there. He didn't back down. He kept showing up. Kept showing up, being obedient to God. And what was his reward? Now all power is in his hand. Now there's no way to get to God the Father except through him. The only way to get to the Father is through Jesus now. Because he completed his assignment, he fulfilled his purpose in the earth. And he also saw heaven on earth. He didn't just, he, it, it wouldn't tell, he died. Now, now scripture say he became poor, that when he became rich, that because he took on his humanity. He took on his physical body. Automatically when, when he put on flesh, he became poor. Put on his earth suit. Automatically we became poor when we put on his earth suit. But when you were born again. Through Christ, you were made rich in every aspect of your life. Every aspect. Every aspect. So just, just, just put it in perspective now. Put, put it in perspective. And so, and so, and even on earth, he, he was prosperous in every area. Every area. Every area. Did the enemy attack? Sure. But he even told us, he said, look, in this world, I've been there, done that. You're going to have some tribulation. You're going to have some trouble. You're going you're to see some trials. The enemy going to try you. He said, but be of good cheer. I want you to be, why would I be of good cheer of that? I don't want no trials. I don't want to be, I don't want to, I don't want to be in no fight. I don't want stuff stolen from me. I don't, I don't want to have, I don't want to face all of that. I, I just, I just want to be happy and just go back to heaven. He said, but be of good cheer because I have already overcome the world. So because he's already overcome the world, he's in us. We've already overcome the world. So all Satan is trying to get you to do is believe a lie. He is the father of lies. And he's just spreading lies and lies and lies and trying to get you to bite the bait and to believe it. And so again, that's why we have to come back. We have to regulate. And that can only be done through prayer and warfare. Again, prayer is you're always going to be. Prayer is always going to be your first and your last line of defense. Always your first and your last line of defense. Let's go to Matthew 6. Matthew 6, verses 9 through 10. Again, that's Matthew 6, verses 9 through 10. It says, In this manner, therefore pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. So Jesus taught us the model of prayer. Notice that he said, your kingdom come. He was talking about God the Father. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We cannot receive full manifestation in our lives until God... God's kingdom comes in that area in our life. So whatever area you're lacking, whatever you say, Lord, let your kingdom come in the area of my finances. Lord, let your kingdom come in the area of my relationship. Lord, let your, area, your kingdom come in my career. Lord, let your kingdom come in my business. Lord, let your kingdom come in my ministry that you've entrusted unto me. Understand that. And so when you pray to God... You're literally giving heaven legal access to invade earth through you. I'm going to say it again. When you pray to God, you are literally giving heaven legal access to invade earth through you. To invade earth through you. So then my question is, whose will are you praying Whose will are you praying? See, we're not praying to God for our will. Because we're supposed to give that up when we are born again. We're supposed to give that up to Christ. Scripture said we were bought with a price. When we accept Jesus Christ, we were bought with a price. Through the shedding of his blood, the remission, uh, he died for the, for, for the remission of our sins. He died in our place so that we can now be 
in right standing with God. So we can go to God, to the Father, directly for ourselves, to the throne, the holies of holies. So we don't belong to ourselves anymore, right? We're adopted into the family of God. The spirit of adoption. We were adopted into the family of God. We were born again through accepting Jesus Christ. So again, our, our life no longer belongs to our own. So the good news is that God's will is far more, far more, far more superior to your will. Far more. So don't spend all that time trying to convince God of your will. Because remember, you have an inheritance from God. And remember, an inheritance is a contract. It's a covenant. Jesus Christ create, uh, uh, brought about the new covenant. The new covenant. The new contract. But it's not like human type contracts where uh, uh, two people come into agreement. I'm, I'm, I'm agree with you. You agree with me, we're going to come to this contract, that we're going to make this transaction, this is what it's going to be. We both are in agreement. We're in covenant together. We're in agreement. We both are coming together for this. No, no, no. This inheritance, this covenant was a one-party guarantee, not a two-party. It was a one-party guarantee where God, who is uh, 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 the giver of that, co that covenant, and we are the, bene the, uh, the beneficiaries. And pretty much we're saying we choose to accept this inheritance or we choose not to accept the inheritance and everything that comes with it. That's it. It's a one-party guarantee. God said you accept it. This is, what, this is what you guarantee. This is what comes with it. If you don't accept it, then you go your merry way. He wants us all to accept the covenant. But it's not a two-party thing. It's a one-party. He made a covenant with us, with, with himself, really, through Jesus' blood for us. And so, so we're not spending time trying to convince God to do our will. His will should become our wants. His will should become our will. So, yes, does God give us a will? Yes, he gives us self-will. You, you have the choice. You had the choice to choose to accept Jesus Christ or not. Now, he put a seed of faith in you that, that, when, that, that when you heard that word, you reacted. Everyone has that seed of faith that's in them, even unsaved. We were saved. We wouldn't even save it by ourselves. It was through grace, by, by faith. We were saved by grace through faith. That seed of faith that's in every child of God, that's in every individual. Some people respond to it and accept Jesus Christ. Other people respond to it and they think it's all them doing it. They think they don't need God. They don't need Jesus Christ. They think that they, 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 they are God himself. They think that they, there is no, no God the Father. Because they're so confident in that seed of faith that was in them. And they say it was able to come in and confuse them and lie, etc. Until they believe they don't need it. They, well, I've come this far without them. No, you didn't. Because at the end, every knee must bow. Every tongue must confess to Jesus Christ. Satan believes. Demons believe and tremble. So it's all deception for those who have not accepted Christ. Or not fulfilling, for, fulfilling the call of God on their life. Fully. Effectively. All right. So again, going back to that self-will. So yes, we have self-will, but he wants that will of ours to be under control by our spirit, not the other way around. Not your body controlling your spirit or telling you tell, to in control at all. Not your spirit being subjected to your, to, to your soul or your spirit being subjected to your flesh. No, 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 no. Your, 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 your body and your soul will be subjected to your spirit. Through way, through way by way of the leading of the Holy Spirit. By way through the authority of Jesus Christ. Who is in us. Hello now. And so. When you, so, so when you put all, all in perspective. This model of prayer. This model of prayer that we see right here. Is an acknowledgement. That we get orders from our Father in Heaven. And that it's only when His kingdom invades earth. That we see results. Remember, you are manifestation. Remember, you are heaven on earth. You are heaven on earth. So prayer is important because when you pray, and I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm not doing this, this is not some blanket teaching on prayer. This is not just some basic teaching on prayer. 
and, and, and I'm showing you the things that are being said that, 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 that are being spiritually discerned, spiritually injected into you. To wake this thing up and understand how significant your prayer life is. How important a prayer lifestyle of prayer is. So prayer is important because when you pray, you're telling God to let his will be done on earth in your life just like heaven wants it. We're on the earth. But our bodies was also formed from, from the earth. Our physical bodies was formed from the earth. So you're literally asking God to do his will in and through your physical body, which is earth. We rule on earth. Because remember, your spirit, your Christ. We rule on earth. Our physical bodies came from the earth. So we're supposed to rule this physical body as well, bringing under subjection to our spirit. And we rule here on earth. We bring heaven on earth because you are heaven on earth. And you bring uh, other pieces of heaven on earth. You are manifestation. And now you bring manifestation on earth. Remember, heaven outranks earth. And again, what I say every week, I've been saying over and over, the earth is not your home. It is your throne. Say it again. The earth is not my home. It is my throne. One more time. The earth is not my home. It is my throne. This is where I rule from. This is your, the earth is your throne. Jesus Christ is the king of kings. You are those little kings, those little queens under his authority. And here you are, letting the enemy trick you and fool you and push you around and lie to you and get you to go by what you see, not by what God said. Stop going by what you see and start going by what God said. Because it's already finished. You, it's already been completed. You understand this. I've been reiterating it. You are manifestation on earth. You are the manifestation of prayers on earth. And your prayers manifest. Not one time that you open your mouth to pray, does your prayer not produce something in heaven. In the realm of the spirit. Always, 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 always. The only problem is some of you have backed up manifestation. Things that are clogged up in the realm of the spirit that have been held up. Spiritual warfare by the enemy. And enemy wants you to get mad at God, saying, Lord, why? Why did you let this happen? Why hadn't this happened yet? And God is saying, you, I told you, once it leaves my hands, it's in your hands. And Jesus said, he wants to intercede. He wants to come in and do it. But he said, no, you've got the power and authority. Jesus Christ is in you. You've got the power and authority to do it. You have the power and authority to manifest it. What's already been done in heaven. And you're praying according to the will of God. So, again, every prayer has a time stamp and a delivery date. Every prayer that you pray has a time stamp. The time you prayed it for the first time, it was a time stamp. When you prayed it a second time, time stamp, time stamp, time stamp, time stamp. Every time you pray on that thing, that's why don't, be let, let, don't let folks lie to you and tell you, that you only need to pray about it one time. Because it's a warfare aspect. And so time stamp, time stamp, and then it's a delivery date. So it's important that you put your request in as soon as possible to get the results. So make it known unto God. Make your petitions known unto God. And thank God that we also have Holy Spirit who prays on our behalf when we're praying something outside the will of God. So, so as we're praying, we're praying something that's outside the will of God. Holy Spirit is yet interceding for us according to the will of God. Yeah, Lord, they're praying for this, but that's not your will. We know that you have something greater. This is their, your will. So I'm praying for them, praying for them here, and we're interceding for them on this. Hit. Okay, Lord, no, I know that's not your will. We, I'm praying for this, Lord. You know that this is what it is. This one is supposed to happen. You see that it's passed through, Lord. Manifest it in Jesus' name. So, see, so, he, so, so he, he's going to pray on our behalf when we're praying outside the will of God. All those times of our weakness, he's praying. Holy Spirit is praying on our behalf. That's, 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 that's an advantage. That's an advantage that you have. So, so we don't get caught up and talk about what's not fair. You, you realize all the perks, all the rights, and all the privileges that you have? You have the power of Holy Spirit at work, and you have the authority of Jesus Christ that you have been given. You, are, you, you, you have the greatest advantage on earth. There is no greater advantage than you have, but the enemy got you talking about what's not fair, what don't seem fair. The enemy is the one who don't play fair. And we have to regulate. 
And so, and so when we pray, we should be bold because, again, we're bold and confident. Hebrews 4 and 16 talks about coming boldly to the throne of grace. You're coming boldly because you're confident. You're coming boldly because you understand your rank on earth. You are a king, and, and, and that's gender, gender inclusive, king and queen. He said king. You're a king and a priest. King because you, you, you have the kingly anointing. You rule. You have the priestly anointing because you can go to the throne of God, direct access to the throne of God anytime you want. And I keep reiterating this over and over again because you, because I don't think you understand how much of a privilege this is. If folks, in old, old, if folks in Old Testament had this type of access to go directly to the throne of God, I'm trying to tell you, they would be doing backflips excited. Because, but because we were engrafted into it, born into it, so to speak, once we accepted Christ, we don't see how big the deal was. Remember, in the Old Testament, in the Mosaic Law, a, a, a king could not be a priest. And, 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 and a priest couldn't be a king. You could be a king and a prophet. You could be a priest and a prophet, but you could not be a king and also serve an office of a priest. You could not be a priest and also serve an office of the king. You could only be one or the other. But when Christ came through his sacrifice, the, 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 uh, the, the veil that, that separated uh, the holies of holies from, from the holy place was rent, and now we had direct access to the throne of God. Guess, it, guess what? And I told you this already. The high priest during that time, when they, you know, the high priest would make uh, uh, sacrifices for the people of God, the high priest could only go, this is the high priest, the chief priest, could only go into the holies of holies one time a year on the Day of Atonement, which we celebrate that only one time a year to make atonement for, atonement for himself, to make atonement for uh, 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 the community, etc. One time a year, one time a year. Outside that, they kept on having the sacrifices of goats and lambs and all these things like that for sin offerings and all these other different type of offerings. So they had to keep doing it over and over again because that could never take away sin. Only Jesus' blood sacrifice could take away sin. What's now put his right stand with God. What's now changes your status. You are now holy. Scripture says because he is holy. Someone said when God makes a promise for, for a specific blessing, do we have to pray it's already I guess you pray if it's already meant, meant to happen. Uh, again, that goes back to something God would do for you, other things he would do for you. So if you're just waiting, if you're just waiting for, for a promise to manifest, it's not always automatic. It's not always automatic. I'm going to get into that in a minute. It's not always automatic. We're going to get into promise in a minute, so you got ahead of me there. Uh, uh, and so, and so I, I put, put, putting that back, what was the last thing I just said? What, what did I just say? I just said something. I'm trying to go back to my trail of thought there. Uh, it's being bold. So going to the throne, going, going to the, uh, having the king anointing, the priest anointing. So in the Mosaic law, you couldn't be a king and a priest. Now, and not during that time, the high priest could only go. Yeah, someone said, okay, do we have to pray if it's already meant to happen? No. Yeah, 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 you still have to pray. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, there's just because blessings and beautiful, that's great, that's wonderful. But at the end of the day, uh, you, got, you got to pray. Absolutely. That's your first and last line of defense. Nothing, nothing just happens. As I told you before, when you pray, things happen. When you don't pray, things happen. <laughs> so you can't afford not to pray because the enemy is waiting for opportunity to cause things to happen that was never God's plan to happen. All right. And so and so and so put that in perspective. So you have full access to go to God's throne anytime you want. So you should be bold in knowing that every time I pray. My prayer produces in the realm of the spirit. There's not one time you pray that your prayer did not produce something in the realm of the spirit. So you should be bold and confident knowing it's already done. Prayer is not for God. Prayer is for us. To refuel our battery, recharge our battery. All right? So again, so we must reach a point in our life, in our prayer life, when we don't pray because we feel we have to. But we pray because we can't live without it. Hear me in the spirit now. We must reach a point in prayer in our prayer life where we don't pray because we feel we have to. But we pray because we can't live without it. That's a lifestyle of prayer. I keep talking about lifestyle, lifestyle, lifestyle. Every time I talk about prayer, I'm talking about the lifestyle, the lifestyle of prayer. Prayer unto God is your life support on earth. I'm going to say it again. Prayer unto God is your life support on earth. It's like the air you breathe. So the enemy wants to come in and contaminate that air. The enemy wants to slow down your breathing in an attempt to keep sifting your prayer life until your spiritual heart stops beating. Until your spiritual heart stops beating. So we have to keep praying and keep praying and make it a lifestyle. 
How much time do I tell you? You, you, you don't revolve prayer around your work schedule, around your life schedule. You revolve your work schedule, your life schedule around your prayer life. Prayer is per- priority. Prayer is priority. If we understand that, if you understand that, I'm telling you, it's a game changer for you. So you, you figure out that balance. But make prayer a priority. Simple as that. Absolutely. Some, some promise are conditional. That women, it, just like prophecy is conditional. It's not always automatic. There's still certain steps that need to take place. Now, I don't mean that at the same time the enemy's not going to try to fight that. The moment that promise was spoken, the moment that prophet word went forth, the enemy already assigned demons to try to block it, to try to stop it from manifesting. To try to somehow to get you all trapped, do something to buy time to, to where they can have a legal right to block it from happening. So that's why we can't afford not to pray. It's your first and your last line of defense. All right. So again, so and again, Amy's trying to contaminate that. So, so again, we keep praying and praying, making that lifestyle. Too much of the church still takes prayer too lightly and goes about it too casually. We can't be casual with prayer. Lack of days go with prayer. It must be our lifestyle. Oftentimes, it's not a manifestation problem, but more of a prayer problem. It's not saying that we don't pray, because I know you pray. We all pray. But it's about praying on the level of your promotion, the level which you've been promoted, as I said. So, so follow me now. If the enemy is attacking you, attacking a man, your manifestation of things from heaven on earth, on, let's say, level C. Let's give it a level C. Level C. But you're praying as though you're on level A, but yet you experience a level C attack. Remember, Amy doesn't attack you based on where you are, but based on, based on where you're going. So you're experiencing a level C attack in this particular area in your life, but you're still trying to pray on a level A level of prayer. What's that going to do? It's going to wear you down. It's going to wear you down. It's going to make you tired. It's going to make you weary. And Amy can try to come in and try to sift you. It puts you at a disadvantage. It puts you at a disadvantage. So again, you become more weary. You become tired easier. Because metaphor, metaphorically speaking... The level you're pumping, the level you're pumping at is not producing enough oxygen in the spirit of what you're carrying, for what you're carrying. It's like overworking. It's like being extremely overweight in the spirit, so to speak, carrying dead weight. Another example is the engine is not working properly in the car. If you want to go faster, update that engine. Prayer fuels that engine. And, it, and there's nothing wrong with the engine. But if the engine's not getting oil, or certain things are clogging it up, it will impact the output. Know that engine can go fast. Know that engine can produce more. Can produce more horsepower. But this thing's clogging it. It's not getting oil. It's not getting tuned up, whatever the case may be. So it's impacting the output, though there's nothing wrong with the engine in and of itself. But if the engine is said it's not getting what it needs, it's going to impact the output. But Holy Spirit is in you. He's that engine. Jesus Christ is in you, so you'll never have a power problem. You'll never have a power problem, ever. It's just a matter of giving the power and opportunity to work by getting the flesh out of the way. Let's go to Jeremiah 1 and 9. Jeremiah 1 and 9. Jeremiah 1 and 9. And it says, Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. So in in this passage, uh, 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 we see this this was the beginning of Jeremiah's assignment, one of Jeremiah's assignments uh, from God. And so God called him to speak to the house of Israel. And it was a great opportunity, but it was also very challenging. It was challenging because Jeremiah was not speaking a very popular message, but he was still called to speak God's message. So the sound from heaven, understand, the sound from heaven will come forth out of you as God places his words in your mouth. He will place his words in your mouth to speak to a situation, to speak into someone else's life. And it may not be popular. They may not like it. They may not want to hear it. But whatever case it be, but it's still going to bring life to them. 
There are more people who will draw to you because of the sound that's coming out of your mouth. I know you might feel isolated. I know you might feel underappreciated. I know you may feel overlooked. But guess what? God is going to make your name great. He's going to make your name great. He's going to make your name great. Because his name is in you. His name is in you. His DNA is in you. It is impossible for you not to be great when Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ lives in you. Colossians 1.27. It's clearly say Jesus Christ is in us. You can't lose because you've already won. He's, Satan just wants you to slow down. Satan just wants you to believe the lie so that he can have an advantage in the fight. So it's the sound. It's a sound, and everyone's not going to catch the sound right away. Everyone may not understand the sound right away, but you're a part of the remnant. Just by you coming up here week after week, you're hearing this sound that's coming out of me, and it's speaking to your spirit. And it's speaking to your spirit. And that's why I said, no matter where you are across the world, for some of you, you know that I'm your pastor. I'm your spiritual covering because of the sound that you've been hearing. But it, but it may be something that's out of the normal because you're like, well, I'm used to going to the four walls every Sunday and this and that. And when God's doing a new thing, you got to know when he's doing a new thing. You got to catch it and run with it instead of trying to go by what, what, what man is trying to tell you. Well, you know, this is that. No, no, you got to listen for the sound and it's going to bear witness with your spirit. With your spirit. So, so, so Jeremiah spoke. He simply spoke what God had to say to the people. God called you to do something, and he placed something, not something, some things in you to speak, whether it be popular or whether it be unpopular. You may feel like the task or the assignments God's given you is tough, is rough, but he, give, he gives the tough jobs to tough people. He gives tough jobs to tough people. He wouldn't have given it to you if he couldn't trust you with it. To whom much is given, much is required. That's why he's trusting you with it. That's why he's trusting you with that vision he's placed on the inside of you. He knew he could count on you. He know he can't count on you. So again, so you are a spiritual portal. Hear me clearly now. See, 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 you understand all this goes back to prayer. If you really begin to realize the magnitude of your prayer life and the significance of it, I'm telling you, you would ramp it up. You would, you would take it to new levels. You are a spiritual portal. Of God on earth. Where spiritual transactions take place. You are literally a portal. For heaven to access earth. Just like there's spiritual portals. Where angels ascend and descend on earth. You are a spiritual portal. I'm going to say it again. You are a spiritual portal. How could you not be when Holy Spirit is in you? How could you not be when Jesus Christ is in you? You are a spiritual portal where angels can ascend and descend. Right in your room. Right where you are. You are a spiritual portal of God on earth where spiritual transactions take place. That's why you are a miracle producer. Do you know how much your prayers have already produced? Do you know how much your prayer has already blocked that, uh, uh, in, in the realm of the spirit that Satan tried to do? Satan trying to block your stuff, but you know how much of his stuff you blocked. And I'll get into that later into the series to put it all in perspective for you. But you are a spiritual portal. You're already heaven on earth. You, 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 you're already... Heaven on earth. Miracle working power is already in that dunamis power is in you. That's that miracle working power. It's in you. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? You are a spiritual portal on earth. You connected to heaven. See, Satan don't want you to know this, and Satan don't want you to believe it. He wants you to think that you're he wants you to still pray in them fleshly prayers. I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. Sound good, meant good, but it's not theologically sound. Or, 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 well, I'm just filthy rags. I'm just these filthy rags, Lord. I'm just so filthy me. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy to call on your name, Jesus. I'm just, I know I'm not worthy. That's an insult to Christ's sacrifice. He said you are holy. That it don't change. It don't change. Jesus, we were bought with a price. And what came with that price, what came with that sacrifice, 
was he put us back in right stand with God. He made us kings and priests unto God. He made us holy because he's holy. He said we are the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ. So you're also righteous. Even if you don't act righteous all the time, it does not change who you are. It doesn't change what he said about you. It, even if you don't act holy all the time, it don't change that, that you're still holy. Are there consequences for sin? Absolutely. Can't just live any kind of life and think there's not consequences for it. Just sitting now, I'm just waiting. I'm trying to go to heaven. I'm going to do just enough to get by to get back to heaven. No, salvation is the beginning, not the end. Once you accept Jesus Christ, it begins now our assignment. So to whom much is given, much is required. You are a spiritual portal on earth. And that's why God's going to get so much glory out of your life. You give heaven permission to, to act on earth. God won't break his own laws. It's not time for Christ to come back yet. Jesus Christ himself. He just dupl Jesus Christ duplicated himself in us, but Jesus Christ himself, the word, who became flesh, is going to return to rapture the church one day. But in the meantime, it's our job to rule here on earth. It's our job to subdue. It's our job to have dominion. But you are manifestation. You are heaven on earth. You are a spiritual portal on earth to what God can, can uh, heaven can make spiritual, spirit, you can make spiritual transactions and heaven can invade earth. And I'm going to take it a step further. I'm going to take it a step further. Heaven won't invade your life without your permission. Heaven won't invade your life without your permission. But the joy about all the power that you have, there's some loved ones, some family, some friends that's going astray or doing certain things, you know, outside the will of God. You have the authority. You have the power to pray for heaven to invade their life. You can repent on their behalf. And, and for heaven to invade their life. Because guess what? You are manifestation and you are called to manifest. You are a seed of God. That, you, that God planted. I say it all the time. God planted you as a seed and he expects you to grow. And then you now have the ability to plant seeds as well. And, and no seeds to grow. And your prayers, are, or your prayers are seeds. And your prayer also waters the seeds that you sow. Do you understand the power and authority that you have? And the enemy got you rolling over. Playing the victim. Beating you up. Got you down. Got you sad. Got you frustrated. Got you angry thinking nothing's happened. Nothing's moving. It's a war, yeah. But he's given us weapons. And I've been training you. I train you. I train you. Train. That's part of my mandate. To raise up warriors. That's why I keep telling you all. Uh, go deeper. Join, join, join uh, uh, my Kingdom Authority Warrior Circle. You serious about it? That's going to give you that extra growth and, and understanding strategic prayer, spiritual warfare, how to walk in Kingdom Authority effectively. You got to take your spiritual walk more serious. Hello, somebody. Your I, 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 I'm just trying to get your eyes to open to how powerful your prayers are. Satan wants you to go by what you see in the natural, not by what you've done in the realm of the spirit. Not one time that you pray. There will not be one time, nor has there ever been one time when you prayed in faith that your prayer did not produce something in heaven. Not one time, not one time, not one, not one, not one, not one, not one, not one, not one time. And I'm reiterating and reiterating because I, I need this in your spirit. I'm not talking to your flesh. I am talking to your spirit because your, your flesh is not going to get all this. Let's go to our last passage. Isaiah 55 verses 10 to 11. Isaiah 55 verses 10 to 11. Matter of fact, we're already 10 minutes over. Uh, let's see here. Actually, I'm going to pick up with that next week. I'm going to pick up with that next week because... I'll pick up that next week. So we're going to and then I'm going to open the lines up again. Uh, of course, uh, you have any questions, you can, you can type your questions there. Uh, uh, God cannot violate his own word, which would break his own laws, which would make God a liar. Absolutely. He can't violate his own word. So, so, so the first call, again, yes, yeah, so people talk about the Warrior Circle. Uh, yeah, you can send an email to info at thecorygreen.org. And you get information uh, on how to sign up for the, for the Warrior Circle. Uh, that's info at decoygreen.org. Info at D-O-Q-U-O-I-G-R-E-E-N dot O-R-G. 
All right, the first call, if you're not saved, the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Christ came to do what? To uh, give you life and that you will have life more abundantly. So if you're not saved, uh, simply just believe in your heart and confess it with your mouth that you believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He rose again from the dead with all power in his hands, and he's ascended back into heaven with God the Father. If you believe that and you confess that with your mouth, that you believe Jesus Christ died for your sins, rose from the dead, he ascended back to God to be in heaven with God the Father, and that he's our Savior, then you're saved. It's that simple. It's that simple. It's that simple. Uh, someone says, will we be praying warfare prayers for the rest of our lives? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can pray warfare prayers for the rest of your life. That's part of prayer. Uh, but it, it don't mean that you're going to be in war all the time. You're, not, you're in a war, but it don't mean that you have to be fighting all the time. Yes, God will fight some battles. Other battles we have to fight. But there's also a rest from war. And there's other strategies. Some, stra some battle strategies. He said, look, just... Don't stand still. I'll fight this battle. All the battles, he said, just worship your way through it. All the battles, he said, war your way through it. So it's all different strategies. The war is the war. The war is going to be the war until Christ comes back. That's why he said you're going to have tribulation. The war is going to be the war. Satan's going to always be trying to fight against us because he knows his time is short. But it does not mean that you're always going to be in a fight. Fighting physically. In a, I'm far not physically. In a, always in a spiritual wrestling match fight. Except there's a, there's a time when there's a rest from war. But... Is Satan always trying to plan an attack? Yeah. But we, you will get to a point where he's going to think twice about how he's going to attack, try to attack you again. So, so, so yeah, we're always going to be, because warfare is a part of prayer. We may call it warfare, but it's really just part of prayer. So, so absolutely. Um, but you're not always going to be in this wrestling match fighting, oh, woe is me. Because once you, how do you know he's praying? I'm sorry, your question, where you got to type that again? It went away before I could read it. So again, just put out respect. So again, you're not saved. Govern yourself accordingly. Uh, ne the next, the next call uh, is if if you know that that I'm your pastor. You you've been hearing this word. You've been growing, growing, growing. You've been coming here week after week. You know that I'm your pastor. You know I'm your spiritual covering. No matter where you are across the world, you know that this is home. You know that this is home. That I'm your pastor of Upper Room Kingdom. You know that I'm your pastor. This is home. So if that's you, uh, uh, that's the first type of a partner that we that we we, we call you uh, members, etc. But we call them partners. But that's the first call. You know that this is home. I'm your pastor. I'm your spiritual covering. Send an email to info at decorygreen.org, uh, and you get information on, on how to become a partner and member of Upper Room Kingdom. Uh, and the second call is if, if, if you're already a part of a church, you're already a member of a, you're already a member of a church, but you still feel very connected here, uh, and you know that you're growing here, you're learning here, you still feel uh, closely connected, and there's a spiritual connection here. Uh, uh, for you to continue to grow, uh, be mentored through this ministry, etc., then that's the second type of a partner. Uh, and you can also send an email to info at decorygreen.org, and uh, you'll be able to specify which type of partnership once you get uh, that, that information. Amen? Uh, and so govern yourselves accordingly. You, you know who you are. Uh, some of you are professional visitors, uh, but you know that there's work for us to do. There's work for us to do in the, for the kingdom. There's work for us to do, and it, it's something about this covenant coming together uh, uh, that, that, that we can carry out the will of God in the earth corporately together. Amen. It's one thing you just come in and get a supplemental word to add on to your tool. But it's another thing when you're saying God is calling me to connect with this church covenantly with God to carry out his will on the earth. And I believe this is that bridge, that connection for me to do that, what God has placed in me to do. So that's what, 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 what that's saying. Amen. Uh, about eating in a dream. So I, I have a look on YouTube on my ministry, uh, or the Core Green Ministries on YouTube, uh, and have a, have a video about uh, uh, demonic dreams. And so eating in your dreams is the enemy trying to feed you in your dreams. Uh, uh, more often than not, it's the enemy feeding you and trying to, trying to set traps, poison, uh, trying, trying to uh, cause you to delay, trying to cause some, something from manifesting in your life. Uh, that's what eating in your dreams uh, uh, signifies. And you pray against that. You war against You send a fire of God against that. You send the blood of Jesus to uproot that deposit. That the enemy made in your in your dreams when, when they were feeding you. That's just the enemy feeding you in your dream. Witchcraft. They're feeding you in your dreams. Trying to cause you to uh, not progress, etc. Alright, and the last call. Look, you know that this is a good word. You know it is good ground. Look, the gospel is free as the old saying goes. But ministry costs. And we need individuals like you to sow back in uh, to the ministry. So that we can continue to expand the gospel. I tell you every week. Everyone is not getting this word. Everyone is not hearing this word. Everyone does not have access to this word. And we need individuals like you to help us. To continue to spread this word. Uh, uh, and, and for us to continue to transform communities. Uh, 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 we, we have an entire church in South Africa. Uh, uh, who, who, who's doing great things. But again it still costs 
uh, uh, money for, for certain things to be done. Uh, we, 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 we're, we're literally in the process of planning in, in, in uh, a couple of states. Uh, and, and, and our planting is not just putting up a building somewhere. It's we going go into communities, transform these communities, uh, uh, adopt these communities, uh, et cetera. And it takes money, and we need individuals like you to continue to sow uh, uh, back in so we can accomplish accomplish that. We can't do it without uh, your generous support because, uh, again, God will use you in that way as well. Remember, when you sow a seed, please name that seed. Don't just sow a casual seed. I, I, I taught you that many times. Don't sow a casual seed. Name that seed. Write down what you sow and what you want that seed to accomplish in your life, and you water it through prayer. You watch it through prayer because your harvest, you wait for that harvest to come, but you watch it through prayer and water it with the word of God, and you keep praying until you see that result from that seed that you've sown. Amen? Because there's some harvest that's come. You forgot all about that harvest. Now, granted God's grace, some harvest did manifest that you forgot about, but all the harvest, the enemy saw it and snatched it and hoping you forget about it or whatever the case would be. So... Name that seed and govern yourself according to where the Lord places on your heart to sow. Uh, you go to decorygreen.org, D-O-Q-U-O-I-G-R-E-E-N.org, decorygreen.org. Go to the Donate tab, and then uh, uh, you sow what the Lord places in your heart uh, to sow uh, into the church. Amen, because God loves a cheerful giver, so be led of the Holy Spirit. Uh, any other questions before I close out in prayer? I don't see any questions. I don't see any questions here. And I'm trying to think there's any announcements. I don't believe any announcements coming up off the top of my head. So, our Father God, we come now to the end of yet another Bible study. We thank for the word that went forth on tonight, oh God. We know, oh God, that it accomplished what you have it to set and accomplish in the lives of these, your people. I thank you, oh God, that it is taking root. I thank you, oh God, for continuing to push us deeper into prayer, oh God, taking us deeper into deeper levels, deeper realms. Of prayer, deeper realms in you, oh God. We thank you for it. We thank you for, for using us, oh God. We thank you for letting us understand our power and authority, oh God, how effective our prayers really are, oh God, that we will not believe the lies of the enemy, that our prayers aren't working, that our prayers aren't producing. For we know, oh God, that we walk by faith, not by sight, and we know that our prayers have caused great damage to Satan's kingdom. So we just thank you, oh God, for giving us access, oh God, to your throne. We don't take that lightly. We don't take that for granted. You gave us access to your throne. We can come to you directly. For ourselves, and for that, we tell you, thank you. We thank you, God. We can call you at any moment's notice, oh God, and you hear us, and you answer us, and we thank you, oh God. Right now, I release the heavenly host to fight on behalf of these, your people, oh God, that they shall be all you called them to be. They shall do all you called them to do. And what you've released, oh God, I declare it shall be released into the hands of these, your people, oh God, and that we shall stand on our post, oh God, and we shall not back down until we see the results. I declare your spirit of peace. Resting upon their homes right now, God, overshadow them with your peace. Overshadow them with your glory, O oh God. We thank you now. We praise you. We glorify your name now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. And I think I'm going to uh, I'll do a short video uh, here this week. Uh, it'll probably, it's either, I'm trying to think I'm going to do it tomorrow or Thursday. Uh, I am thinking it is going to be on, uh, I'm thinking maybe tomorrow at 7, I believe. Maybe tomorrow, Thursday. I don't know which one. Uh, but it'll, even, even it'll, it'll be around 7 o'clock uh, tomorrow or Thursday, so be on the lookout uh, because I have, uh, you know, I try to do that, a little short weekly video as well. I uh, just drop, give you some nuggets uh, with the week. But remember, go back and listen to this word. Because you're not going to get it all in one sitting. Please make sure you go back and listen. Because again, faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. You go back and listen to it. Holy Spirit will open your eyes to some other things. And because there's a lot of nuggets that will deposit tonight. And, 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 and you need to process it. And hear it again. And take notes. Amen. So that thing sinks down in you. Because this is very, very important. Uh, as we continue to move forward. And remember that you are the breath of God. And God never wastes a breath. This is Apostle DeCorey Green. Sign out. God bless you. Heaven spell upon you. I'll see you soon. Everyone have a great evening.